Hello and welcome back to Hill Climb Diaries for a special look at my bike for the season. It's been a while, but we're back and raring for silly season here in the UK. The weather is getting bad, uh, and we're all trying to ride uphill as fast as possible. Now, I am compensating for a lack of fitness with a stupidly light bike, so I thought we'd run through the fancy changes. Let's start with the wheels, because naturally, I got two sets. But before we get to them, make sure that you stick around until the end where we'll be weighing the whole thing. But, spoiler alert, it is under six kilos. When racing uphill as fast as possible, you're probably thinking it's an easy choice. Just go as light as possible. Well, it's not actually that easy. Look at most of the surfaces that a typical UK hill climb uses, and well, it isn't tarmac perfection. Throw in some rain and we have a problem. So I've got two sets of wheels. The first are these NV SES 2.3s at 1,274 grams. They're tubeless hoops with a 21 millimeter internal width. Believe it or not, they're not my lightest wheels, but with the wide tubeless tires that we'll be getting onto later, I'm hoping to glide over those broken surfaces. Less weight doesn't always mean faster. The second set is Hunt's new hill climb wheels. They're tubular, which means that the tires are glued onto a specially shaped rim. They weigh just 963 grams, which makes them quite frankly, ridiculous. These are 311 grams lighter than the Envy's and I've got them for the steeper courses when weight will outweigh the extra rolling resistance of tubular tires. If you want to see us pitting aero versus weight against each other, then check out Simon's excellent video. At the end of this one though, don't go anywhere. Two very different wheel sets require two sets of tires. On the Envy wheels, I have Envy's own SES road tires. I think I've been quite clever with the sizes. At the back, I've gone for a 27 millimeter to provide ample traction for my measly power. Uh, then at the front, I've gone for uh, 25 and saved a little bit of weight. There is another reason for the size of these tires. Road surfaces on typical UK lanes where hill climbs take place are less than ideal. I would rather float over the imperfections than kind of bounce up the hill. It helps me to settle into a rhythm and I'm hoping that it will make me faster. And then on the Hunt wheels, I have a set of Continental Podium TT Pro Limited tires that I bought off celebrity hill climber, Joe Norledge. Now, some of you may remember Joe for his sublime hill climbing prowess. So I'm hoping that these tires provide me with some go faster juice. Now, before you let me know in the comments, I am fully aware that these aren't the lightest tubulars available. I tried for weeks to get hold of a snazzy set, but brands just aren't stocking tubulars anymore. Take a look at pro teams. Most are running tubeless these days, and as a result, the demand for tubulars is declining. It actually makes me a little sad. Uh, nothing in my eyes rides quite like a nice tubular tire and they hold a special place in my heart. I just hope that they don't become something that you can only get secondhand on eBay. That said, to many people, they are a faff to use and most of you probably won't miss them too much. Anyway, these are both 25 millimeters wide, which I think is as narrow as I'd want to go on the rear tire but the front I could have saved a little bit of weight by going for like a 21 or a 23. But which setup would you pick? Uh, tubs or tubeless? Or maybe you're neither and vote for inner tubes. Why not let me know in the comments? The frame is pretty much the perfect tool for hill climb season. This is my specialized S-Works Athos and beyond the scarily low 599 gram weight, it is absolutely bob on for the riding that I like to do. Now Specialized says that the ovalized tubes that it uses allows them to use less materials in key areas, thus the low weight. Personally though, it just looks lovely and you can't really say fairer than that. Manifesting being good at bikes is all I've really got this season, so I've decided to become Primoz Roglic by using a one-by drivetrain. 
but to avoid any repeat of his misery in the Giro, I've used a chain catcher. So hopefully my chain doesn't come off. I've done all of this to purely save weight uh, because you can get rid of the front derailleur and you can get rid of the chain ring and you can actually run a shorter chain too. Anyway, the chain ring is a 40 tooth unit from Wolf Tooth. It doesn't actually fit on these cranks at all. Uh, so I had to get the file out, but because I'm so good at metal work down here, you can barely tell. If I hadn't told you, you wouldn't have known. Um, I have paired this with an 11 to what I think. Okay. Oh, you're right, mate. <laughs> get out me shot. <laughs> I've paired this with an 11 to what I think is a 34 tooth cassette out back. I got this a few years ago from the depths of the internet because one, it was an oil slick color and two, I needed a cassette for cyclocross. It's quite light at 226 grams and it's got a good gear up here for the really steep hills, especially because I can't really push this chain ring. Now, yes, I could have saved weight by going for a Dura Ace crank set over this old Tegra one, but I don't have that kind of money and we couldn't get hold of one. So this has stayed. And to be honest, the gearing has been pretty much perfect. I've ridden this a couple of times, two races, done my races, ridden home. I really like doing that. And the gearing has allowed me to, well, ride comfortably all day. Just maybe it might be a bit steep for the steeper roads. There's only one way to find out. The front end of my bike has been fully switched from aluminium to carbon, saving weight over the old Ritchie Neo Classic setup. In comes Envy's SES bar and stem. Now the bar is a 40 centimeter and the stem is a 120, which is the same as my usual setup. In terms of weight, the bar is 267 grams and the stem is 133 grams, which is quite feathery, I would say. To save even more weight, I've removed the bar tape and I even considered cutting off the hoods because I've scuffed them up a little bit and replacing it with some skateboard tape. But then I remembered that I liked the skin on my hands, so I didn't. I have, however, raised the bars by five millimeters and angled the hoods so that I've got a better position for climbing out of the saddle. Saddles now and I've got Tune's Sky Racer. Now this is 66 grams and yes, not much to it. Personally though, while it doesn't look that comfortable, I haven't had actually any issues with this and I ride to my races. Let's be honest, a hill climb saddle doesn't actually have to be that comfy. You're either in the saddle mashing the pedals, trying to squeeze out every last watt or you're out of the saddle. But personally, as someone that likes riding to my races, I really like this one. It saves weight and it's comfortable. Right, just before we talk about finishing kit, I have got this in its race day spec, which is to say I've taken off the bottle cages. Anyway, speaking of bottle cages, personally, I don't think a bike is complete without just a little bit of bling. And so I've got a bolt and lock ring set from Wolf Tooth, nice and gold, very, very flashy. From the flashy to the flashing, uh -huh. I've got a set of lights from Halfords. These were a fiver. You need lights in a hill climb now because it's officially classed as a time trial under CTT regulations. You've got to be wearing a helmet and have lights. So these were a fiver, they weigh 19 grams each. And I think that is absolute fantastic cost per gram saved. It's probably the most value thing on this bike. The pedals are my old Ultegra ones. They've been absolutely fine for me for years. And the crank is a 4i unit down on the non-drive side here. My computer of choice is the Garmin Edge 840 Solar, which you can watch my review of. Click up there. And I have mounted it via the plastic band-on mount because that saves weight over an out-front mount. So speaking of weight, it is time to weigh this. I've taken the Garmin off and the lights off because, you know, I want the best weight possible. I don't care what anyone in the comments says. 5.935. Now, if uh, you want to tell me in the comments where I could have saved more weight, be my guest. And don't forget that we will be at the national championships checking out all of the hottest tech from there. And watch out, the day before the national championships, we'll have a look at Andrew Feather's incredible Super 6 Lab 71 bike. It is really, really hot. Uh, remember, if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe for more, and we will see you next time.